All right, our elderberry has been fermenting for three days now and it has a good ferment going and we are ready to put it into the car buoy, put an airlock on it and put it in the corner for several months. So I'm gonna see if I can get you a picture of it here just so you can see the activity. It might be a little difficult, but I'll bring the camera over and see if we can see inside here so that you know what it looks like, okay? So I know it's kind of dark, but I'm going to move in close here and just keep your eye on the screen because you can see this as I move in. You'll see the bubbles. Do you see the movement in there? Okay. Yeah, you can really see it. So I know it's kind of dark, but you can see the activity. That is uh, all the bubbles. That is your fermentation going on, releasing the gases. You can also see that it's a nice clean looking uh, fluid. You know, there's no solids on the top. There's a little bit around the rim, but nothing on the top. Everything is settled. And this is fermenting nicely. And so now we can go ahead and put it in a car buoy where it's got less exposure to air, get it off of our kitchen counter and let it ferment. Okay, so I've gotten a little piece of tube. You want that food grade. This is, uh, I think, uh, 3 eighths three-eighths of an inch diameter inside and we're just using it to siphon out the wine from the primary fermenter into the carboy. Uh, what I do is just fill this up with water, some good clean water, and use that to get the siphon going. They do have ones that have got a stand, a little bit of pump on them, and you can use that as well. But again, this was just working with the least expensive materials that I could find. So this is going to take a few minutes. And we're going to siphon this off into the car buoy. Okay, I'm tipping a little bit so I can get the most out of it without getting the very bottom. There may be a little bit of drags down there. And this is just about done. I think it's going to go. There it goes. That's it. Okay. Tube in there for a minute. Now, during that process, if you do want to take a hydrometer reading, get your specific gravity, that's the time to take a little bit here. That will just show you by the readings, you can see that you have got a ferment going. That should have come down a little bit. But you can also visually see that it is fermenting and ready to go. By putting it in the car buoy, we're going to seal it off better. We are going to put our airlock in here. Let me get a little bit of water in this, and I'll be right back. Okay, so what this is going to do, it's going to let the gases from the fermentation come out, but not let any air in that would common contaminate or give you off flavors. You're not, you're not going to ruin this as far as making it, um, you know, bad or not consumable, but you can make it so it doesn't taste good if it gets contaminated. Uh, the fermentation, the alcohol will take care of any bacteria if it's got a good ferment. But if you get any contaminants in there, it'll also ferment that and give you some off flavors, and we don't want that. So we're going to put that in and seal it. And it will just take a minute or two to fill up in here and this will start bubbling. So I'll bring the camera over here in just a second so that you can see how that's going. Okay, so you can see that that is bubbling. It's, we're getting a bubble about every second, so that is a good ferment. It will probably increase just a little bit as the pressure builds in here. And uh, this is gonna continue to ferment strong for a few days, and then it will slowly taper away. Most recipes say five to six months to leave it in here. I have not had one go that long. 12 weeks has been the longest where it was done fermenting. And if you watch this for, I say 15 minutes is the rule that I have, and I get no bubbles, then it's done and ready to go. I've never had a problem with that. So watch it regularly. In the beginning, you can check it once a week, and you'll notice that the time between the bubbles slows down. And as it does, you want to start checking it a little more often. Pretty soon you'll be checking it every day. And eventually you'll just see that the fermentation has stopped and it's ready to bottle. Now, I'm not gonna do a video on that part, but you can use some old wine bottles. Um, you can use old beer bottles, grosh bottles, whatever you want, but you do wanna seal it up. And um, you know, you can again just use that siphon or you can buy a little pump to get out of there. Um, you know, the other thing you can do, if you wanna use a plastic fermenter, I don't like those, they can harbor bacteria, 
but they have them where an airlock goes in the top and they've got a spigot on the bottom so you can set it up and it is convenient. It's, it, it's really, really nice. Uh, but I just don't want to ferment in the plastic. So we're going to use this and then we'll just si siphon it into bottles and cap those. And I think that's about what you need to know. Now, this does get better over time. And um, most recipes, again, say five to six months before you drink it. Ours doesn't last that long, <laughs> but it does get better as it ages. So the longer you can leave it, um, I think the better it will get at least through that six months. We've maybe got seven, eight months out of a couple bottles and it's great. Um, just a couple notes on elderberry. It, it's, you know, it's not a grape wine. It's got a sweet yet um, can have a little peppery or slightly, uh, spicy is not quite the word, but it's the best word I have for it. So if you get that, don't think you did something wrong. Um, you'll know if it just doesn't taste right if you ended with, up with something dirty somewhere. Uh, now, if it gets moldy, you're not fermenting, okay, and something went wrong. But if you get through this process and you can see it fermented and you get here and it's got an off flavor, um, it's not going to hurt you. You just, something was dirty. It got contaminated. You know, something wasn't as clean as it needed to be. And so it gave you some off flavors. You'll have to decide whether it's tolerable, tolerable or not. I've had to throw some away. Some we just deal with it because we worked hard to do all this process. And um, so we go ahead and use them. Man, I think that's it. I hope this has helped you guys and given you confidence that you can wild ferment. Just don't wash your fruit. You can, you know, sift it, clean it. If it's a bigger fruit, maybe wipe it off. But don't wash it. What we found is that when we wash it with water, um, other than maybe a real light rinse, uh, but we don't even do that. If you feel like you got to rinse it because there's dirt or something, okay. But real light rinse. You don't want to tumble it. You don't want to move it around a lot because it rubs the yeast off. And that's where we've had um, wild ferments not take and uh, we've had to add a commercial yeast to it. And do know that if that does happen, if for some reason it's not taking, the ferment's not going, you can add a commercial yeast to it. Just follow the directions and you can use a basic wine yeast for this. We've had it with cider where we've added a champagne yeast because the natural yeast didn't get going. And it's better than throwing it away if for some reason your ferment didn't go and then you can keep practicing and learn next time. So again, I hope this has been helpful to you. Enjoy. If you have any questions, let me know. And when you do one, let us know. Let me know how it turned out, okay? Take care, and I'll see you soon.